everybody? Going good? You guys liking that cold weather outside? Yeah, one person. <laughs> None of us are used to it, man. Summer got extra innings. We weren't ready for winter to come along like it did. I didn't even know it was actually winter time until I was driving to work this morning and I saw two pillheads pushing a lawnmower into a pawn shop. I was like, well, cold weather's here to stay, I guess. Break the heavy coat out, Dad. Can't tell by the sound of my voice, I just got here from my audition for Wrong Turn 7. <laughs> you gonna die out in them woods, girl. Yeah. My voice is my voice is very Appalachian, to say the least. It's a reflection of how I grew up. I, I didn't grow up in a trailer park, but it was on the other side of the fence. I, I grew up just, just like every, you know, lower middle class white family in this state did poor <laughs> this body can't show off the fact that we didn't have proper nutrition due to that like let you in the common thing uh, we used to hear was man when we were growing up we just didn't know how bad we had it our parents always tricked us or showed us that oh we, we were better off than what we actually were and it's, it's an idea that when you're a kid, your parents go out of their way to not let you realize that you don't have a lot of money, you know, you're on the poor side of life. Uh, I like that idea that uh, it's all Skittles and gumdrops and we're keeping the kids happy, but the truth is kids are dumb. It's not hard to not let a kid know something's going on. Proof positive of that is when we used to get food for the week, my dad would make one box of toaster strudels last an entire month because he said they're fancy Pop-Tarts and they're only for the weekends. <laughs> Eight toaster strudels, two kids, that's four weekends. By the way, I have a bone to pick with toaster strudels. Their advertising is nonsense. There's never enough frosting in there to make that happy face. What is this one pack nonsense? Don't give you one pack of mustard for a hamburger. We used to, my mom used to take white bread, put butter on it, and put cheese on it, put it in the microwave, give it to us as a meal. Called it cheese toast. Sometimes when she wanted something sweet, she'd take white bread with butter on it, a little powdered sugar, a little brown sugar and cinnamon, put that in the microwave, warm it up. Called it cinnamon toast. Another example of how dumb kids are. That's not even toast. <laughs> we thought it was a delicacy. Oh, mommy, can we eat cheese toast for breakfast? My mom was like, hell yeah, you can, you little shit ass. <laughs> this is, yeah, woo! I can sit down and watch Days of My Lives, hell yeah. <laughs> That's just weird, man. Every, every time I go out of town, I have to like take up for West Virginia because there's always somebody in the crowd. You're from West Virginia? Hey, no, Boston, if you can't tell. <laughs> Man, I hear all these bad things and every time I'm, I'm just, I just think, you know, we didn't, those stereotypes are horrible, you know. If you come to this state, yeah, there's bad things here just like anywhere else you go. But we've got really good people here. There's a lot of really nice people. Apparently none of them are in the audience because nobody's clapping. Um, <laughs> Pity now, no, it's, it's too late. We're too far into this. <laughs> no, really nice people live here. Some of the places for scenery are absolutely beautiful. I'll put them up against anything in the world. And I, I always tell people, you know, when you come to West Virginia, uh, a lot of our stuff is handmade. You know, we make, we make handmade furniture and handmade clothing, and we have the best meth. <laughs> I'm just, y'all are laughing like it's not true. <laughs> Drive 40 miles that way and get some Kentucky meth. That is garbage. <laughs> Insta heat. What is that? Get out of here. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Fat. I don't do meth. <laughs> that shit's an appetite suppressant. And I need this appetite because, boy, if I was skinny and this funny, I would have to get an armed escort past the ladies. <laughs> Glad that I could show you people how delusional I am. That's what I'm really proud with. It's, when I go out of town though, like I say, I always defend West Virginia. And there are times when people catch me just with the way I talk. Because the, the more, the further south I go, the worse this gets. 
and I'm smarter than my voice sounds. I really am. It's, you know, my dad used to refer to me in high school as tougher than he looks and smarter than he sounds, which was as close to I love you as that old dude ever got. But thanks for laughing at my pain. But there are times when this voice comes out and we'll be having a conversation and I'll say something along the lines of, you know, I completely understand why these people want to protest the president-elect. I completely understand where their viewpoints are completely opposite of this man. They don't understand and they're afraid for the way this country might be going and the future they see ahead of them if this guy gets what he wants. I understand. I don't see them as bleeding hearts or overly sensitive. No, not at all. But at the same time, this guy and this voice had that conversation and made that statement as we were in a car going to a thing called Duke's Fest, which is a two-day celebration about the Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> And at the end of that, I was in the stands going, shit, yeah, jump that car! Woo! <laughs> and blow the horn when you do it! Do -do 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 High class white trash, man, that's what I am. And I thank you very much for your time, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Andy Cranston. Thank you so much.